You're going to die. Maybe not. Goodbye to you, my trusted friend. family does. Please pray for me. I was the black sheep of the family. Man has to look his best when it's time to get married. Or buried. I'm going to need a gun. Goodbye, my friend. It's hard to die. John Wick can't be John Wick. So I'm in a bit of or a state of confusion at the moment because I've just re re uh, bought, not received, sorry, just bought with my own money, uh, the Quest style M15i. USB DAC headphone amp with dual outputs. One is 3.5 mil and the other is a 4.4 mil balanced output and you have a gain, uh, low gain, high gain toggle really nice feeling switch uh, on the underside there uh, show you what the back looks like as well it's upside down let's flip it over so that is the back so all aluminum construction aluminum if you're american uh, but yeah this is um 250 pounds at the moment on amazon and i've had quite a few amps in recent times to power these headphones the ananda hi-fi and ananda nano uh, i'm using the linsol triple win cable um, i've got a 3.5 and a 4.4 balance for this as well uh, really nice cables lightweight more pliable than the stock cable uh, and just nicer all round than the stock cable uh, headphones mod by the way strap mod uh, i've got a guide on how i did this in another video so check that out in the description below uh, but yeah, the um, the amp itself, uh, this confuses me because this is smaller than the size of a matchbox. Oh my, this hand, the size of my hand compared to it. Smaller than a matchbox, powered by USB, and kicks out more power or more volume, should I say, because power is a bit irrelevant in this con in this sort of context more volume than my dedicated headphone amps this is the topping mx3s used to power my speakers q300 um, and i have been using it as a headphone amp as well now this kicks out 700 milliamps uh, milliwatts sorry over two uh, uh, per channel uh, and it's 3.5 out only not balanced so obviously you're going to get so much out of it and that's at high gain so I have got it on high gain when I kick it into headphones mode. It is on high gain, not low gain. So let me just put it back onto speakers mode. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so high gain versus low gain. And um, that's okay. The sound is fine. I like topping sound. It's nice and smooth and has a slight warmth to it, which works well with planners because they're quite bright by default. Uh, and I am using Vormax Memory Foam Velour earpads as well. So this controls the sound, takes away some of that brightness peak, which can be quite piercing and fatiguing. So this helps a lot, these pads do. They're 20 pounds off Amazon, so really cheap and infinitely changes the sound for the better. I can listen to these all night long and all day the following day without any issues at all. And the headband obviously adds to the comfort. But the amp, this has been the confusing part. I've got something this size kicking out sound that beats not only this, but I've also had the FIO K7, which is 1400 milliwatts, I, if I remember right, over the 4.4. So you've got something kicking out serious power, but this little thing is beating it hands down, like everywhere it's beating it. Uh, it's connected to Windows at the moment, my Windows PC, and it does default to 32-bit 48 kilohertz 
So I've just left it at that. It seems fine. My default normally, my personal preference is 24 bit, uh, 48 kilohertz, but this, this is fine. I had no issues with it whatsoever. And it's recognized by default and Windows, no drivers needed or anything like that. So yeah, that all works out the box. No additional things needed to be done. Whenever I plug it in, Windows defaults to it anyway. So I can, I don't need to manually toggle anything in Windows to get with headphones out versus speakers out. Just plug it in and it speakers out. Just, it just works. And as you heard there, I, I actually wedged the phone, both microphones, two, there's quad mics on this. And I just put the phone, both ends of the phone inside the ear cup. So you got the full effect of what this amp can do to these headphones, because these are amazing headphones, especially after the mod. Uh, for me, they're end game headphones, but I didn't think 14 ohm sensitivity headphones like these, planar magnetics especially, could be driven by something that small and be driven better than a wall socketed, dedicated headphones amplifier. So I've also had, by the way, the Topping DX3 Pro Plus, which is better than the Fio K7 doesn't output more power than the Fio, but it sounds better because it's got that topping sound, as I said, that warmth. Whereas the Fio has a transparent nature to it, it's more clinical. It doesn't have that kind of warm, smooth nature to it, which really works well with planards. Hence why I returned the, uh, the Fio K7 anyway. Um, otherwise it's a fine amp, you know, it's really good. Uh, and then I just continue to use this. But the problem with using the MX3S as a headphone amp for planars, especially 14 ohm ones, is it will hit in, it will kick into its uh, protection circuit. So you will see P0 displayed there every now and then, depending on what music you're playing or sound is being played. It's because the, they're too sensitive, 14 ohms, which is why I can't believe that this little thing is able to do what it does without any protection circuit or anything like that at all. It has some other cool features as well, which I'll mention, uh, such as if I'm playing something, for example, YouTube here, trailer, when music is, when audio isn't playing through the output, through the PC, whether it's YouTube, Spotify, whatever, it doesn't really matter. If I'm skipping tracks or if, uh, if I pause it or if I move on to the next item on the playlist, this will fade the audio in rather than immediately crack in. So the Q style or Quest style, however it's pronounced, they've engineered it in such a way that you don't risk blowing your ears or your headphones. Because if the next track is really loud immediately and you're at high volume, I'm at, win at Windows volume 50, by the way, and that is louder at 50 than my DX3 Pro Plus was at 50. And this is in low gain. I've not got it on high gain at the moment. It's even louder on high gain. Um, but yeah, what was I saying? The um, fading of the audio happens as I skip tracks. So if I play this at the moment, it's playing. Oh, there's two LEDs on it. One, the bottom LED is the gain indicator. So there's two LEDs that come on on the bottom on high gain and one LED when it's on low gain. And that top LED there, the second one, is the uh, activity indicator. So when there's an active signal coming in from the PC that it detects, that will come on. So if I play the YouTube video now again, it goes off and then it goes back on. So that indicates that the signal is fading back in, it's coming in and it's processing that signal, so to speak. So it fades in, it protects your ears, and it protects the headphones. Obviously the headphones mostly, because it's still gonna go to whatever volume you were at. But it's just, it's out of the box. There's no configuration needed. There's no sort of app or tuning utility or anything like that. It's just smooth and warm out of the box. And it has a wider sound stage than both of my toppings, wider sound stage than my uh, K7, the Fire K7. Uh, when I say wider, I mean in terms of planars wide. These are wide anyways. It is really spacious and the stereo imaging is amazing. But the soundstage through this, through the balance as well, I did try it on 3.5. Similar kind of sound, but it's just lower volume. The 4.4 balanced is louder, uh, which is the case for most full balanced output uh, amps anyway. Uh, but yeah, it's the soundstage and stereo imaging, the detail pickup, is greater 
than what the FIO and the Topping DX3 Pro Plus were or are. So that in itself is amazing. And as I say, there's no tone controls on here, yet it sounds perfect out of the box. I would not want to change anything else. And this is exactly what I've been looking for. It's not cheap, 250 pounds at the moment on offer. Normal price is 299. Uh, so yeah, it's not cheap for what it is given the size of it, but this transforms high quality, high end, high res audio on headphones that are normally hard, sensitive, so hard to drive. And these can drive 600 ohm headphones from what I've read online as well. I don't have my 660S2 uh, anymore, but those are 300 ohms and yeah, it could easily drive those, including other headphones as well, which are 600 ohm. But yeah, I'm just, as I said, I'm in a state of confusion at the level of advancement we've got in microelectronics like this, that you can do, or you can output sound that powers headphones like these to such a degree that it beats the need for a desktop dedicated headphone amp. Why buy headphone amps anymore? Why pay £500, £600 for a headphone amp when this needs no wall outlet, just powered by USB? And anything you plug into it will output the same sound. There's no tweaking, EQing needed or anything like that. It just works and it costs less than £300. It's just, it's boggles the mind. Um, but I did read into what they do and Quest Style have done with this. It drives headphones the way it does because it uses amps to drive the headphones. So it's using the current rather than the voltage, whereas all other headphone amps or the majority of other headphone amps use voltage. Uh, this uses proprietary tech to drive it through current instead. So that's quite interesting. I don't know the ins and outs of exactly how it works. I'm gonna have to do some further reading, but I wanted to listen to it first to decide if I wanted to keep it or return it. Cause I bought it thinking I'm gonna return it cause there's no way that's gonna drive headphones like this. But here we are. And now I've found my end game headphones. I've now found my end game headphone amp. And no matter if I plug this into my phone or PC or laptop or tablet or anything, I'm always going to get the same consistent sound. It's just, yeah, boggles the mind. Um, buy this. You will not be disappointed at all. I have no, you know, I've not even reached out to QStyle or anything like that. I just bought it off Amazon thinking I'm going to return it two days later after listening to it and not enjoying it. But yeah, this is, this is something else, honestly. No more headphone amps needed. Save yourself a wall socket and take this wherever you go. It just works. That's it. That's all I got.